everyone, and welcome to BrickCats. Today I am featuring the Jarak and BrickVault T65 X-Wing Starfighter version 2, released in early 2022. The original T65 was my first video review on YouTube when I started this channel back in October 2020, and of course the X-Wing will always trigger some serious nostalgia for many fans. As always, leaving a like and or subscribing is a great way to support what I do. The X-Wing needs no introduction, so I'm going to jump straight into the pricing information before I move into the rest of the review. And I am focusing on the Dirty Red version, or Red 5, because this is the only one that I built this time. Without any substitutions in mid-March 2022, Bricklink was returning 7 stores at $197 before shipping and tax, or about $250 after shipping and tax. For the blue, clean gray, and white version, I got the following prices. And the instructions do contain conversion parts lists if you have version 1 and want to upgrade. Here are the numbers for the conversions. Whether you're converting or not, I do have a fairly extensive list of part recommendations, so if you're interested in those, skip ahead to the parts section. I'll also mention up front that these wheels on the back of the engines here are specified in flat silver, but flat silver is extremely rare in the United States. There are currently zero for sale as I am recording this on March 17th. So you basically need to switch those out for light bluish gray, unless you have set 75218, which is um, one of the only recent sets that these wheels can, they might be the only set that these wheels have come in flat silver in. In my reviews, I offer my opinions on aesthetics and model features, parts issues you might want to look out for, the build experience, the model's integrity, and I close out with my overall impression and pricing information in the conclusion. If you're watching this review, I assume that you have bought the instructions or are interested in buying them. I also assume a basic level of familiar familiarity with Bricklink's ordering system and LEGO nomenclature. I only use genuine LEGO bricks, and I always purchase the instructions for myself. Lastly, I create these reviews for my own personal enjoyment, and in the hopes that my advice will make your experience more enjoyable and or less expensive. The T65 measures 15 inches front to back, 13.25 inches from wingtip to wingtip, and it's about 8 inches tall from the base of the stand to the highest point. Without the stand and the S-foils open, the fighter is about 4.5 inches tall. And this is pretty much exactly the same as uh, the exact same length and width of the original version, but the S-foils open a bit wider on version 2. At the front of the fighter, the nose cone is very nicely shaped with these curved slopes and they're set at a little bit of an odd angle by a hinge and hinge plate inside the nose here, and that's covered up with this 4x2 wedge plate. There is a very small gap in the nose, which is a little unfortunate, but uh, overall the shape is just fine, and you can't really see that gap from most angles. I'm trying to show you just a little bit there. I don't think there's a great way to cover this up as the 6x2 wedge, which is new for 2021, late 2021, doesn't come in dark bluish gray yet. But as I said, the gap is pretty minimal anyways. The nose cone transitions smoothly into the fuselage, whose angles are created very nicely with tow ball and clip connections. As you'd expect, there's nice color detailing on all sides, and one of the new 2x6 tiles on top here while the broken red stripe continues all the way back to just behind the cockpit. You can kind of see this dark bluish gray uh, 1x2 section here. This is actually specified as dark red, but for reasons I'll get to in the part section, I switched that to dark bluish gray. The cockpit, as you can see, has no problems fitting a minifigure. Here you can see Luke Skywalker. I think this is Hoth Luke Skywalker. He or she does not stud into the seat, uh, they just rest there. And the cockpit does have some controls and a scope and a joystick, very similar to version 1. 
R2-D2 or your favorite astromech droid it sits nicely just behind the cockpit and there is a stud connection in the astromech well now. And the astromech droid is pleasantly easy to get in and out in this version, which was a little bit of an issue in the last one. There is a nice greaveling strip on the top here, and that continues to the rear of the fighter, which is very nicely shaped with these curved slopes, and there's some additional greaveling in the back here. Moving to the engines, the top of the engine the top engines use the cylinder piece for the nice smooth curve, while the bottom engines use curved slopes to hide the landing gear. The rear landing skids fold out very nicely, although as foils of attack positions, this might be a little more difficult. Fold out nicely like that. While the front landing skid folds up very nicely into the hull. Like that. The engines in general I think look really good and the 4x4 intakes have the T shape constructed out of bars with clips and minifigure nozzle pieces. The thrusters on the back are pretty standard construction with 2x2 ground pieces and I like how these uh, Technic drive rings here provide a little bit of extra flaring from the main part of the engine to the exhaust vents there. One part of the engine area I wasn't too keen on were these 1x2 tiles sections here. All the reference material I can find indicates these sections are just a continuation of the slope all the way to the back, uh, with maybe some fins on top. So maybe this, these tiles are just a piece choice to differentiate that section from the smoother one up front. Either way, this is certainly a very small thing, and it's repeated on all four of the wings. The wings themselves have a lot of nice details on both the inner and outer surfaces, and specifically I really like how Jurek has included, as you can see right in here, some detailing uh, indicating the internals of the engine on the inside of the wings, uh, visible when the S-foils are open. And speaking of the S-foils, this new gear mechanism generally works very nicely. You've got a a Technic gear to grip on down here, and you turn it, and the wings close or open. And the new S foils use worm gears, which have to be actuated using that dial. Uh, so when they're closed or open, you can't just open them or shut them by hand. You have to turn the knob. And I think that on mine, I, I must have done something wrong because it worked. Um, you build the S-foil mechanism first, and when I was testing it, it did work. But now, when I turn this, I'll try to show you. Like it kind of opens part way, and I feel that it's stuck right here. So I actually do have to coax it open a little bit more with my hand. But not a big deal. This is just gonna sit on the shelf anyway, on the stand. Um, but if you are planning to open and close these a lot, um, you might want to take some extra time to make sure that you got the mechanism right. And I'm sure this is my error because it works perfectly fine on the black T70 that I just reviewed, and it's the exact same mechanism. When the S foils are closed, close this again. There is a small gap visible between the engines and the fuselage, which is a little bit unfortunate, but again, even if you've got these closed on a stand, you're not going to see those in most viewing angles. Here's a look at the underside of the fighter, which is nicely filled in pretty much everywhere. These two bars with clips in the instructions are shown uh, such that they kind of fill in this gap and they rotate and should be flush with this part of the fuselage, but um, it doesn't fit, so I'm not really sure what I did wrong, or maybe... I don't know. Anyway, I think they're supposed to be flush, but they're not. And here also you can see the bottom wings, and each wing is slightly different uh, with the color patterning. 
Finally, the Blast Series use some Technic here, and then the new minifigure, newer minifigure candle pieces to create the offset blue and white spiral pattern. I do like how this is smooth all the way down the, I guess it's the bore, but I wish there was a way to get more blue and uh, more gray, more, more alternating pattern here. Um, but unfortunately, these minifigure candles are, are 2L long, so you can't. And the flash suppressors uh, and tips of the blasters are represented by these minifigure Psy uh, daggers, which look pretty good in the absence of a better solution. So overall, the X-Wing looks amazing, as you would expect. And even compared to version 1, there are a lot of little differences, like those engine internals that make this model a really great display piece. And of course, instructions and parts for the uh, Jurak standard stand are included, which holds the X-Wing at a nice upward angle and provides a stable base. The Derby Grey model consists of 239 elements and 1,333 pieces. Since there are four variations, I did not spend the time to go through all of them in detail, but I'll try to note when I think the recommendations that follow apply to all of them or just a certain subset. Also keep in, not, keep in mind that this is not every color or part substitution you can make. There are certainly more pieces hidden that could be any color, but I've omitted these both to make both the most efficient use of my time and because most of the time it doesn't save you a significant amount of money to switch out a gray 1x2 plate for any other color 1x2 plate, for example. Four out of the ten 4L bars in light bluish gray, part 30374, are used to support the engine structure, and these can be any color as they are completely hidden, and this should apply to all of the models. The Technic Worm Screw, part 4716, is specified in black, but any color will work as these are hidden in the S foil mechanism. And the same with the Technic Gear 12 Tooth Bevel, part 6589, which is already very common in the specified tan, but you might have light gray or light bluish gray already available. These also apply to all four color variations. The four light bluish gray gears, also 6589, are at the edge of the cannons here. And these are a little bit expensive, but light gray will work equally well, and sometimes can be a little bit cheaper. There are parts specified for R2-D2 for some reason, and I think these can be safely omitted, as I think everybody has an R2-D2, and these are parts 553 PX2, 30361 PB025, and 30362. This applies to all four color variations, and the head for R2-D2 only, strangely, is also contained, or is also included in the upgrade part list, so I think if you're looking to convert, then you can eliminate that as well. The 4 Technic Axle 3L with stud, part 6587 in dark bluish gray, is nearly completely hidden and can be any color, and these provide the stud connection for the 1x1 round trans pink tile that signifies the engine glow. Dark tan is the most common and that's likely what you have if you've got a spare bin of Technic pieces. 4 out of the 5 round 2x2 with hole and rotor blade pattern go inside the wing intakes, you can see them in here. I'm not convinced these really provide a lot of extra value in terms of the engine's appearance, so I think it would be worth substituting them for a straight dark bluish gray 2x2 uh, two two with brown tile with hole to see if that makes a big difference in cost or saves you a store. The last printed tile goes on top here and makes part of the Griebling strip, and again this looks pretty good, but it's worth seeing if you can just substitute all five for the plain version. The hinge plate 1x4 swivel in reddish brown, part 2429C01, was very expensive when I was buying my pieces, so I substituted dark bluish gray. And this is not great, but this dark bluish gray hinge was 10 cents instead of something like $2 for the reddish brown one, um, and it reduced my sort count by one. And this only applies to the dirty gray or red 5 version. The Technic Gear 20 Tooth Bevel Part 32198 is, used, is specified as the dial to move the S foils in all four models. And first of all, I found this pretty difficult to get a grip on. If you can see that it's pretty thin, and so it doesn't sit very far off the surface of the the bottom surface of the X-wing here. Uh, and this is also 
a fairly expensive piece. I think this is like 75 cents or something. To replace that, I use the Technic Gear 16 tooth, part 94925. And this part is very common in light bluish gray and very inexpensive. I think these are like 8 or 10 cents. And But the main reason I switched this, other, other than having it already, um, after I put this on and uh, completed the model was that I found this really difficult to grip. So um, part 94925 is a lot better, in my opinion. The cylinder half 2x4x4, four four, part 6259, is specified in light gray. It's worth checking if the light bluish gray half cylinder is cheaper, as I think it looks better anyway. But I do really like that uh, the light gray version was specified instead of light bluish gray. Another potential solution would be to buy a dark bluish gray half cylinder and put on some stickers. Um, I have a leftover sticker sheet for some reason from set 75172, which is the gold leader Y-Wing. And I think this sticker would mostly hide the dark bluish gray. So you can just see some of the edges of the cylinder where the stud holes are. Um, so you might get a little extra patterning, but hey, that's not the worst thing in the world, especially if it saves you a store and you know probably a couple dollars. The sticker sheet for 75172 is very inexpensive right now, it's about 60 cents. And obviously this doesn't apply to the white model, but it would apply to the clean gray and blue models as well as red 5. The specified cockpit windscreens for all the variations is part 21849 PB01, and this one has the silver cockpit window frame and the rivet pattern, and this came in set 75102 and 75149. This is quite expensive these days, and I switched it out for the much less expensive cockpit piece with the light bluish gray window frame printing. This is part 21849 PB05, and this is the one that came on the newest X-Wing, set 75301. If you do want the riveted cockpit pattern, it might be worth buying it individually depending on the store the algorithm gives you. These tend to start out at about $10 and go up from there, so if the algorithm is giving you a store selling it for more than about $16, I would probably just buy it individually from the store selling it for $10. You gotta figure about $6 for shipping and tax, so if the store that the algorithm gives you um, has it for more than $16, then you save by buying it individually. The wheel 18mm diameter by 14mm with axle hole, part 55982 in flat silver, is incredibly uncommon in this color, and there are zero available in the USA as of mid-March 2022. And I did check, flat silver did only come with set 75218 in 2018. So if you have one of those, you can borrow from it like I did here. And if you don't, I recommend substituting light bluish gray for all four models. And just to kind of give you an idea, there's not that much difference. A little less contrast between uh, the back of the engine and this assembly here. But in my opinion, since you can't get the flat silver wheels anyway, uh, you might as well. The 1x3 and 2x2 inverted tiles mostly found on the interior of the wings here. Parts 35459 and 11203 in light bluish gray can be substituted with their common plate equivalents, parts 3623 and 3022. And of course these do make the interior of the wings smoother and break up the anti-studs a bit, but definitely check to make sure you're paying a reasonable price for them. Sometimes you get a random seller from the algorithm that has them listed for like a dollar each when they should be 25 cents or so. Same story for the white model using the white pieces. Once again, I did not buy parts for the stand, since I have a couple of the new stands already from the TIE Fighters. But if you don't have a stand already, I do recommend building it. But here are the parts if you don't want or need it. I also noted some common color substitutions for the stand parts in parentheses. Here is a list of elements that were significantly cheaper directly from LEGO, either through bricks and pieces or pick a brick in the quantities you need for this model. Again, there are probably some variations in colors between the four color schemes as far as which pieces are more economical directly from LEGO, but in my opinion they're worth double checking. As a general note, especially with the dirty gray and blue variations, there is pretty significant room for color substitutions with a lot of the surface pieces. 
In addition to that dark bluish gray hinge, uh, I found myself short a single 2x1 slope for the underside with the front fuselage here, which was really annoying to me. But I ended up substituting uh, these 1x1, one one, uh, well, these cheese slopes in dark, uh, sorry, sand blue and sand green uh, to make up the shortfall. And I think those look pretty good. And you could definitely make use of sensible colors if you already have them, such as dark tan, uh, light tan, probably in moderation, medium nougat, dark bluish gray, dark orange, sand blue, and sand green. And those would contribute to the overall look and feel of, of the Rebel X-Wing. The instructions for the Dirty Red version contain 420 steps, and these include the stand. Each part or subassembly added in a given step is outlined in red, which generally works just fine. And this build took me about 5 hours total, spreading over a couple days without any sorting beforehand. I have a little bit of trouble with the S-foil mechanism, as there's no true connection to keep each wing piece in place while you're building it, and this all makes more sense when you're actually doing it. Also, when you add on each engine assembly, only the connection on one side of the S-foil mechanism is shown. And this is not a problem if you do it correctly, because the rear connection is obvious in that case. But in my opinion, it's pretty easy to get the orientation mixed up when you're in the initial steps. So a viewing angle showing the connections at the back would be helpful, especially for a less experienced builder. Some of the connections are also quite tight, specifically the top greveling strip that secures the forward section of the fighter to the rear in step 335, as well as one of the connections on the rear greveling section here, until you join the two halves together in step 345. Be warned that you might have to use a little bit more force than you might be comfortable with to get these two connections to work. In particular, this top grievelling strip was a little sketchy, but it does work eventually. Other than these small issues, this build was a lot of fun, and in my opinion it's even more fun if you built the version 1 because you get to see all the improvements and changes that Jurak and Brick Vault incorporated. <laughs> Again, even though it's a small thing, I especially appreciate it that the instructions are now in the landscape orientation as opposed to the originals that were in the portrait orientation, which makes going through the steps a lot easier. Some specific improvements that I was really happy to see were mostly in the forward fuselage. That sketchy 2L bent hose connection is gone, uh, and that was right towards the front here in version 1. The maxi figure hands are gone, and that tricky connection for this top of the forward fuselage has been completely reworked, so it's much easier. So very well done. This model is reasonably durable with only a few minor weak points. The underside engines are just these 2x2 curved slopes, and they're relatively easy to pop off when you're trying to open up the landing gear wells. Occasionally, you might have seen earlier that one of that these pop off these wedges right by the uh, what should have been the cargo compartment, uh, and these two studs form the connection for the stand. So occasionally, if you grab these and you're trying to take it off the stand, those will pop off, but they're pretty easy to put back on. The rear section has some less secure connections. You can see that these are just tiles and slopes, and they're only really studded in one place. Oh, sorry, clipped in one place, so while these are actually pretty solid here, uh, these come off like that occasionally. And the only issue with this is that this is right where you're, you want to put your hand when you're grabbing this to swoosh it, so you kind of just got to be careful to avoid those. The model is reasonably solid when you're swishing it, but the back of the fiber is actually kind of narrow, when the S-foils are in attack position anyway. Thankfully, the engines now use very strong bar connections to hold them in place, and you do find your hand knocking against those, so that's a really nice improvement. If anyone has built version 1, these fell off all the time, so that's really great. And like I said, this back section is a little bit narrow, so I actually have a little bit of trouble gripping it like this, and as a result, like I said, sometimes these tiles come off. But where you put your thumb, right here, and your 
your finger on this can uh, inverted slope here, that's actually very solid. So you can apply as much pressure as you need to when you're moving this around. The engine intakes are rotatable. However, this is much less of a problem than on the original. There's a lot more friction here. For those of you that have the original, you know that if you basically just blew on this, it would it'd spin. But uh, that has been fixed. And there's a little bit of uncomfortable flexing. Let's see if I can demonstrate this here. Uh, in the nose, if you can see, just watch this part here, and you'll see that it kind of rotates about maybe this point here. And that's different than version 1. Um, and I think that's just a product of, there's no actual connection in this top part here to lock this in place on both the top and the bottom. So that's why there's a little bit of flex, but you're not going to want to pick this up by the nose anyway. And the stand, of course, in addition to holding the fighter at a very nice angle, is very sturdy. And the studded connection to these two technicals, uh, to this Technic piece here, is very strong. And, of course, the way you put this on, really self-explanatory. And then to take it off, you rotate the fighter forward and just pops off like that. And last but not least, the fighter is reasonably stable on its landing gear. It doesn't collapse very easily if you're looking to use this in a mock or a scene of some kind. So you can actually push it along a smooth surface and it's going to be okay. And that's what the landing gear looks like. Version 2 of Jerax T65 is a much better model than the original, and Jerax and Brick Vault have clearly done a lot of work to eliminate some of the questionable parts of the build, as well as eliminate some of the elements that have become really expensive over time. In terms of accuracy, I think this is about as good as it gets, and while I didn't build the other color variations this time, I am very tempted to. I covered the initial costs in the introduction, so here they are with no substitutions again really quickly. as well as for the conversion parts lists. Making only the basic changes of the flat silver for light bluish gray wheels, switching to the less expensive cockpit, substituting the dark bluish gray for the reddish brown hinge on the red 5 variation, and removing the droid parts, I got the following results for a full build. And for the upgrades, upgrade parts lists, or conversion parts lists rather, making the same applicable changes for the wheels, the droid head, and the hinge, because you should have the cockpit piece already, I got the following. And it's definitely worth pointing out that there is significantly less cost savings for upgrading the white model than the others. As far as those considering whether or not to convert your version 1 into version 2, I think the value proposition here is quite a bit less than building new. If you've got a spare spin to raid and can cut the cost down, or if you tend to handle your X-Wing a lot, then it might be worth it. Otherwise, if you've got version 1 as a display piece already and are happy with it, I don't think the visual changes, as good as they are, justify spending well over $100 to make the change. Instructions for the T65 cost $18.99, and there will be a link to BrickVault's website in the description, along with a link to Jurak's Flickr page. You get the instructions and the parts list for all four color variations. Again, that's the clean gray version, the dirty gray red 5, this is the one you see here, the blue version, and the white version, as well as parts list to upgrade version 1 of the corresponding X-Wing to version 2. And by that, I mean... The conversion uh, will take you from the version 1 of Red 5 to version 2 of Red 5, but not, for example, from Red 5 to the blue version of version 2. And if you bought version 1 of the instructions either by itself or through the Alliance Fighter Pack, you should be eligible for a 50% discount on the new version. If you didn't give an email with the offer from BrickVault, I recommend emailing BrickVault and asking if you're eligible. A copy of your original receipt should be enough as proof of purchase. Thanks as always for watching my review of the Jurak and Brick Vault T65 X-Wing. 
If you've built this model, you have something to share that I left out, or have a question about something I didn't cover, please leave them below in the comments. Also, remember to leave the video a like, subscribe to the channel, or follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. I hope to see you back next time. Thank you.